this is an exact recipe for a burger that I used to sell at one of my restaurants, which goes for $15. I set up a second camera. We'll see how that goes, but I still want to that in there and show you guys this half. Mm. A lot of people ask me is if it's worth going to culinary school. My experience, and this is just me speaking from my experience, and um, for those of you who don't know, I am a culinary dropout. I dropped out with one class left. Am I sad about not getting my degree? All right, let's jump into it, you guys. I'm sure you've seen my intro, so um, I'm just gonna let you guys know that I'm taking this recipe. <laughs> Hopefully they don't sue me. They're not gonna sue me. This is an exact, I don't wanna say exactly, but it's pretty much the same recipe or the same kind of steps I went through in a restaurant I used to work for. I noticed that in the video I said my restaurant, I meant like the restaurant I worked at. And this was a recipe or just kind of a burger they did. So I'm gonna be going through the steps with you guys on how we accomplished that burger and I'm doing Idaho potatoes to make my fries. Um, so I do my best to cut these in the size that I want. This is, um, you guys can cut it whatever size you want. Just make sure that they are all the same size. Well, not all the same size, but majority of them are the same size. And then what I do is um, put them in water overnight. Don't mind the ice. It's I had a whole bunch of ice in the in my freezer and I just decided to dump it. Um, but you don't need the ice, just cold water will work fine. It's going in the fridge, so it's going to get cold either way. Um, also, the reason why I'm doing this is so that the water removes all of the starch. If you notice when you make home fries and you cook them, they turn brown and they're soggy and they're kind of limp. Um, I feel like cold water kind of crisps up the potato while also removing the starch and the sugar inside it that makes the potato turn brown when you fry up french fries. I'm trying to not I'm gonna try not to do too much talking through this and just kind of let um, it show like just what I'm doing just show you guys And so then I finish those up and put those in the fridge overnight. And then I'm also gonna be forming my patties overnight. I wanted to try something. I don't know if it necessarily worked. I wanted to try something as far as um, burger shrinkage. So I'm trying a few different things um, to avoid like shrinking my burger. And so you see me here, I take my parchment paper and I'm gonna divide them in four so that um, this little this little gadget that I got off Amazon to see if it would work obviously you don't need this um, a lot of the time I'm just experimenting to see what would work so now I'm gonna be weighing this out I don't really need to show you guys this because you don't have to do this whatsoever but I wanted each patty to be first I wanted to do eight ounces because I remember doing an eight ounce patty in the restaurant but then I decided to break them up in two and just make it like a double um, but I weighed them all out to four ounces like I said, you don't have to do this step. I'm just, I'm just extra per you. So after that, I get my little parchment paper and then I get my little ball of ground beef. And this was ground chuck 80-20, you guys. And then I use this little thing to press it down. Did I like this? Actually, yeah. I think it was actually worth the money. I don't even remember how much it was, like five bucks? Because I don't actually like forming my patties. I think this is so much more simpler than forming your patties. And plus, I feel like every time I form my patties, I overwork it and I um, warm up the fat. So when you're like forming your your patties, I feel like your hands are kind of warming up the fat and like you're kind of taking some of the fat out of the burger and you want the fat inside the burger. Now I'm gonna get started on this cheese fondue. Um, this was called fondue when I was working in the restaurant. 
I know that what they did was like a really generic American cheese and then they did pepper jack and it was sharp or medium cheddar I believe they did. I don't remember that last one but I chose sharp just for flavor and obviously the Velveeta cheese slices are going to help with the creaminess of the cheese sauce. So I just kind of take half of each pack. And the key to this, I used half and half. Um, I used a half a cup. I decided to measure it out this time because I know I do a lot of not measuring and it kind of sucks when I'm trying to put a recipe together at the end and I gotta kind of guess what I did. So I try to measure this out for you guys. Um, and so I started off with a half of a cup of heavy, or uh, half and half, and I just warmed it, you guys. This process, if you want your cheese to come out nice and creamy without it being grainy and separated, you want to go really slow in this process of adding your cheese. You do not want this on a high temp. I had um, the stove on low the whole time while I was while I was doing that. So I let my half and half come up to like warm to where it was warm, and then I started adding my cheese in very slowly. And I whisked, whisk, whisk, um, you know, to incorporate it. But just take your time with this part. If you want a nice little fondue, just take your time, you guys. That's all I can really say. And then just keep it at a really low heat. And then it just, it turned out perfect. And then I decided at the last minute to add some pickled jalapenos because I just have some and I'm, I haven't used them yet. But that's totally optional. And you guys see that creaminess? came out perfect and I'm also going to show you guys how I reheated it because I made it the night before and all I did to reheat it was warm up about another I'm gonna say half a cup of half and half got it real warm turned off the heat and then added the cold cheese in and just kind of worked it in and then um, it came back to the creamy creamy cheese state that it was in So now I'm gonna be doing my bacon. This is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna be putting it um, in the oven. I feel like that's the best way to cook your bacon. No mess, no fuss, and they come out um, straight and they cause less shrinkage when you put them in the oven. And I just did 350, but if, you're, if you haven't done this before, I would start at 325. And then um, make sure you check like every first 10 minutes check it in in 10 minutes and then after that check it every five minutes because once it gets hot you if you know anything about bacon as soon as it starts getting um starts getting color it'll go from zero to 100 so fast so make sure you're watching it now we're going to be making these burgers this is pretty self-explanatory i had the heat up really high because like i said i'm trying to um, figure out how to create less burger shrinkage which i just still haven't figured it out i really haven't figured it out i took a tip somebody was like don't add oil to the pan and i was like that makes sense because then the meat can actually grasp to the cast iron and it worked until i flipped it but it didn't shrink too bad obviously you see it doesn't shrink too bad and you guys when you put this on here I am trying to cook mine to medium rare to medium if you guys do not want to cook it to that make sure um, to get the crust you put this in the pan three four minutes on each side so you get that nice brown crust turn it down on low heat and just kind of let it go until you feel like there's no pink in the middle and then I do one slice of pepper jack and one slice of American cheese. So I set those to the side and then I get my pretzel buns. I almost made pretzel buns, but I felt like you guys weren't going to be too interested in that. So I just kind of was like, whatever, I'll buy some. Um, and I just put those in the same pan and just heat those until I toast them. And now we're going to be making the fry seasoning. This is, like I said, the exact recipe that we use at the restaurant when serving up fries. 
um, <clears throat> and what it consisted of was fresh Parmesan, fresh rosemary. It didn't have fresh rosemary, but this was perfect. It did the same exact thing. And then also some red chili flakes. And I'm telling you guys, eh, try this. Put this on your fries. You are going to freaking love it. It is so good. You wouldn't think, um, sometimes when you think of certain things, like certain recipes, you're like, ah, that might not go. That might, no, this goes, okay? It's delicious. And you might be skeptical of the rosemary, but trust me on this one, you guys. And so what I do is take out the fries from the fridge. I get a um, towel so that I can drain off um, any excess water on the potatoes. Now this is really important, okay? Because I'm gonna show you guys what happened when I just kind of was like, eh, don't need to drain. I don't really need to dry them off that much. And then we're gonna, for the first fry, this is how you get crispy fries. I don't care what nobody tells you. This is how you get crispy fries. You fry it once at 300 for four minutes. And then I put them in the freezer to cool down. And then I fry them again at 350. So I do that and then I put them on a sheet tray and put them in the freezer, not very long, just so that they can cool all the way down and come to temperature. Okay, so let me show you what happens when you put when you put the fries in and it's hella moisture on the fries. What it does is obviously, you know, my fryer is not like an industrial fryer. So when I would do this at work, it wasn't a big deal. But since I'm at home doing it with an at home fryer, you really have to make sure you get that moisture off of those potatoes. Because then it will do this. Obviously, it'll create all of the um, foam, and you don't want that because obviously it's dangerous. So what I had to do was like keep pulling it up and playing with it so that it didn't get so um, foamy. But just be careful doing this part, you guys. All right, now we're gonna make the quick aioli for our french fries.
And also you're gonna know there's a lot of cheese. Yes, when we were making these burgers, you know, when you order food, you might think there's something in it. You might think there's this or that, and you might know like, oh, okay, this isn't healthy. But I mean, when I used to be at work, they used to butter the crap out of those buns and put so much cheese. Um, believe it or not, way more than what I'm doing right now. So um, definitely an explosion of cheese, but that fondue just takes it to the next level. I'm gonna toss the fries into that parm mixture that we made earlier. Oh my gosh, you guys are so good. All right, you guys, and that is it. If you guys made it this far, leave me some pickles or cucumber emojis because that's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, I love you guys so much and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, you guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. And as you guys can see from the thumbnail, the title, you guys know what we're doing today. And hopefully you guys watch the recipe part because I got some good stuff to show you guys. And this burger, believe it or not, um, is completely restaurant style. Like and this is an exact recipe for a burger that I used to sell at one of my restaurants, which goes for $15. The french fries, the sauce, the burger, a $15 burger that we just made today. And I couldn't be more excited to show you guys. And also today I set up a second camera. We'll see how that goes. I do get comments here and there about how you um, wish I would have, wasn't standing and making it so uncomfortable for myself. I do want to let you guys know that I am the most comfortable standing when I eat. Um, that's just something I, I'm used to. Like I said, that is a habit I picked up in the restaurant, being able to never sit down and eat. So I like to stand. So what I'm doing is providing you guys a second view to see if that works. Let me know down in the comments below. If I put it up, that means it went well. If I don't put it up, that means it didn't go well. Um, but let's get into this because I'm starving. I'm starving. Let me show you guys one more time. Now I put together this burger and it was messy. It was very messy. So, and there's no way I'm gonna be able to eat all of this burger. And, but I still want to Oh my gosh. Oh, and it's perfect. I'm gonna put that in there and show you guys this half. And this is, I cooked it to, I wanted to do medium, about medium, medium rare. I like my burgers with pink in the middle. Like I said, you guys can cook it to whatever temperature you want, but normally the standard would be medium, I guess. Um, I like it pink because I think it's more juicy that way. All right, you guys, are you ready for this? Oh, this is so messy. And I'll give you guys a little backstory on it. I'll give you guys a little backstory on this actual burger. Mm. Try to make sure. This is so messy already. Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. What I'm going to do is actually take out one of the pieces of meat to make it more pliable. And I got my aioli that we made. Dip that in my aioli. Mm, 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 mm. I actually might eat that all. <clears throat> mm. 
Definitely with one patty, I can definitely take this burger down. Mm-hmm. Let me finish this half and then I'll talk to you guys. Mm, 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 mm. I know a lot of you are gonna oh crap I'm sure I'm not getting it my boobs are so big I it's it's bound to happen I'm getting stuff on my boobs I literally just went straight into eating that. I don't even think I said, hey guys, welcome back. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to get this up for you guys. I'm so bad with like, like planning, editing and stuff like that. And so when I think I can edit and film in the same day, I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. And then it's taking me forever. But um, the little back story to this uh, so this is actually, like I said, a restaurant burger that I used to sell at one of my old restaurants down to the aioli, down to the fries. I put Parmesan, red chili flakes, and rosemary in, on these fries, and we used to sell that just like that. Um, I did everything like how I would do it at the restaurant. I let the fries sit overnight in the refrigerator. I let them fry, and then I froze them, and then fried them again to keep them fr crispy. Um, I pretty much did everything. The only thing that is not the same as the restaurant is one, I would put it together much more nicer because it is restaurant. And then also I would grill the burger and then um, the meat mixture we always did in house. We ground up our own meat and that's the only thing that's different to this burger. Um, but other than that, this is, this is the true, this is the true $15 burger. Wow, just wow. Hope you guys can see that on camera. I'm actually gonna keep this toothpick in here to keep the burger together. So let's see how that that's gonna work. Mm. Even though these fries cool down, they are so good. Mm. I was just doing a full on running around everywhere. Oh, and I know a few of you are gonna be like, oh my God, sis, that's too pink for me. Like I said, it's personal preference, you guys. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. you guys already know that when i am when i am eating as soon as i start to get full i start talking y'all already know what's happening right now use my fry to slather on some Aioli. Mm, 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 mm. are hot all right all right <sighs> y'all 
I feel like that only lasted a second and I'm already just like tap out. I'm ready to tap out. Um, <clears throat> anyway, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I'm cutting it short, but I want to get this video out to you guys and I hope everybody enjoys their Saturday. Let me know what you guys think about this new camera angle. Hopefully it goes up, but let me know what you guys think about this new camera angle. And if you guys are still here, leave me some burger emojis, leave me some fry emojis, either or, or both. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. This was good. Dude, that's good. I do want to let you guys know <clears throat> that I did not forget about the culinary questions. It's just that I got so many. I did. I was not expecting you guys to ask me um, some of the things that you asked me. I don't know what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more of like, oh, mini Q&A, um, just talking about like my experience in culinary school. But the more that I saw your guys' um, questions, I was like, you know, this is kind of going to have to be probably a sit down um, because culinary school and the restaurant industry and all of that stuff was just so um, such a big part of my life that I can't just do like a, you know, like two second Q&A. Um, I'm going to answer, you know what, right now I might just answer a couple right now and then do an actual part two of just a complete sit down. So if you guys are not interested in this part, thank you guys for joining me for the eating part or the recipe part. Um, this part is going to be for people who are curious about my culinary school experience and um, you know my journey with that. So I went to culinary school at the Art Institute of Seattle as well as the Art Institute in Phoenix and um, this question I get a lot um, and the reason why I say that because there's a ton of culinary schools and you need to do your research on what culinary school would fit you. Um, I know community college offers culinary school. I, I know there's some specialty culinary school, tech schools, all of that stuff. Um, I chose the Art Institute of Seattle because I wanted to go into pastry and I wanted to do chocolate. So I wanted to be a chocolatier and I chose the school that I chose because in Seattle there were a couple of um, pastry chefs that were well-known pastry chefs and I knew that they taught at that school. So that's the school that I wanted to go to. Um, when I transferred, I thought it, when I transferred to Phoenix, cause I followed Chris out here. That's a that's a story time. I don't think y'all ever knew, but I actually followed Chris out here to Phoenix and um, don't follow anybody for love. OK, don't do it. It's not worth it. Anywho, uh, I went to the Art Institute of Phoenix thinking it was going to be the same as Art Institute in Seattle. And it turned out to be completely different, although I did learn a lot of stuff. I had a ton of fun. Like culinary school was so fun for me, you guys. <laughs> Like when I got into the restaurant industry, I was like, oh my God, can I go back to culinary school? That was fun. Um, but then I went there and I met a lot of uh, good people. I still talk to Tiana to this day. We actually had a conversation um, a few days ago about this, about our like experience in culinary school together. And she's definitely a really good friend of mine that I still continue to talk to. Um, but like I said, Make sure you do your research on culinary school. Make sure it fits you, um, your budget. That's another huge thing that a lot of people ask me is if it's worth going to culinary school. My experience, and this is just me speaking from my experience, I wouldn't have went to culinary school first. Um, I, my, my degree was $45,000 and I do not think it was worth that. But, you know, the Art Institute is, you know, it was a business first and I also feel like it's a scam. So whatever. Um, I don't feel like it was a scam because obviously I did learn a lot. There were actual chefs teaching us. It wasn't like made up chefs. These were actual chefs that work in the restaurant industry um, who've earned their title. So I don't want to say I didn't learn anything, but I just felt like on how much you had to pay was not worth it. Um, so make sure you, you definitely do your research on the budget wise. And I do want to say that, um, I don't think I would have went to culinary school first because, and I say this because a lot of people go to culinary school thinking I'm going to go to culinary school. And then when I get out, I'm going to be a chef, Ta-da! I'm a chef. And, um, it just, it just doesn't work like that. Chefs that when I was in the kitchen, um, the chefs I work with have been working for years and years and years and have put in countless hours. And the chefs that I have had the pleasure to work for are completely just, they're very passionate about what they do. Um, and that's another big thing going, starting in the restaurant first 
and then doing culinary school, I feel like once you start in the restaurant, then that working in a restaurant will really tell you on if you wanna, if you wanna actually do it. Like on if you actually wanna be a chef, because I feel like a lot of people don't realize what it actually takes and that you're sacrificing so much, you're sacrificing so much of your time. And that's basically what your life becomes is being in the restaurant. I remember um, waking up at five o'clock in the morning I drove an hour and I would work off the clock because I wanted everything to get done. Um, it was a lot of work. I was working three stations. I worked up as a pastry cook. I worked on the line and I worked as a prep cook, all three together. Um, and I was getting paid $11 an hour, you guys. So you really have to think about on if you want to do that. And then when I would get home, I didn't want to cook. I didn't want to do any of that. Um, and then I would just fall asleep and do it all over again. And then also that was some of the, that was some of the most tough years because I also started drinking heavily because that was my life and I was stressed out and it consumed me so much. But through all of that, I learned so much in such a short amount of time. I'm sweating. I learned so much in such a short amount of time. And that's why I say, go, go to a restaurant, choose a restaurant that you would actually want to work at. So, um, I was downtown. I went downtown to look at a, at, um, some restaurants that I had liked or, um, were near places that I liked like actual chef owned restaurants. I was looking for a chef owned restaurant cause I wanted to see what it would be like to work under, you know, a chef in a kitchen and all that stuff. And so that's why I highly recommend it because the moment I did that, I was like, am I made for this? Like, and it really, it really pushes you. And that was some of the most trying years. Um, and the last job I had, it was at a very popular steakhouse here in um, Arizona called Steak 44. I, <laughs> they probably hate me, but that chef, he was probably one of the coolest chefs I ever met. And um, I quit two times because this, the amount of stress it was, it was just too stressful. Like, um, you know, it's when you're working in the restaurant industry, it's such a high demand. And like, <sighs> anyway, this like, <sighs> now that I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm getting, getting a little stressed. Anyway, I don't want to go, I don't want to ramble too much because like I said, it brings up a lot of emotion for me because it's such a huge part of my life, but I am going to, I'm going to leave it there because I do feel like I need to do a part two where I'm actually answering your guys's questions. Um, I don't want to scare you away from culinary school. Like I said, I had the most fun in culinary school. I would have did culinary school again, even with what I'm telling you guys, I would have just went and started in a restaurant first and then, um, probably would have got a different kind of degree. And, um, for those of you who don't know, I am a culinary dropout. I dropped out with one class left. Um, am I sad about not getting my degree? Not really. I learned so much i don't really feel like i need a degree to validate my like what i've learned and what i know now i don't really need that um but like i said hopefully i'm probably just rambling and this is all over the place but i did want to make sure that i did not forget any of you guys who are asking me about culinary school i'm not forgetting about that it's just it's it's definitely definitely want to talk about it more than just like sum it up in one of my cooking videos. I might actually just sit down. Um, but anyway, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and that is it. You guys,